Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to the Sheena Metal Experience with your host, Sheena Metal, right here on LA Talk Radio. That's right. It's the Sheena Metal Experience right here on LA Talk Radio. For more info on the show, latalkradio.com, sheenametalexperience.com. Don't forget to email me and let me know what you think of the show because you know I love that story. You know I do. Um, it's Tuesday, and you know what that means. It's Psychic Tuesday, so it's time for a Lightworkers Unite broadcast here on the Sheena Metal Experience. <clears throat> That's when I grab another Lightworker, Psychic Medium, Empath, Healer, Intuitive, shaman etc and i bring them onto the show with me and we do some psychic readings and spiritual healings and spiritual counseling and whatever it is that you need answer your spiritual and paranormal questions you tell us what you need and that's what we do and today my guest is this beautiful empty chair one of my good friends empty chair everyone welcome empty chair to the show Yay. Ah, just kidding uh the wonderful rebecca haywood is here she is stuck in traffic because she lives like out in the mountains, so it takes forever. Where well, you know where shaman live in the mountains, so it takes forever for her to get here. So while we're waiting for her to get here, a couple things. If you want to get a reading today, you text me eight one eight four three seven zero eight eight six. That's my phone number. That yes, I just gave out to you live on the air. You send me a text, and I will set you up and call you through our magnificent Skype system. And then we always know who's going to be on, and none of the calls are a surprise. And um, you know, we don't pick it up and somebody can't hear. It's like I become sort of the call screener on the down low, as well as the host, as well as the producer, as well as the, you know, the everything, everything, everything. The person who puts stuff up on the web, which is what I'm doing, I'm going to put the link around right now so that we can share Lightworkers Unite with all the people on all of my Facebook pages and all of Rebecca's Facebook pages. And there's exciting news to be announced maybe today, if not today, maybe next week. But it has to do with Rebecca, and it has to do with me, and it has to do with LA Talk Radio, and that's all I'm going to say. So figure it out. So the big news is I just came back from Dallas, Texas, right? And that was the first time that I ever did my own spiritual seminar. I've taken play, uh, part in a lot of people's um, seminars and conferences. I have never done my own. And last year, I was out, uh, my wonderful friend Patty Negri invited me to go out to the Embrace Your Spirit Conference and speak at the Miracles of Joy Metaphysical Center uh, outside of Dallas, Texas, in Louisville. And I went, and I didn't know anybody in Texas, and I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, I went, and it was fun, and I met new friends and new tribe and new wonderful people. And then, lo and behold, um, they invited me out to do my own seminar for three days, and that's what I did this weekend. I was actually there for four days. Look who's here. And um, I just got home, like, at 1 o'clock in the morning last night, and it's uh, so much fun. And um, I just went to Texas for a week, and Rebecca looks like she's been in Texas for a week, and I look like I've been in Boston in the winter with this skin. But uh, it was a really a, life, a life-changing, um, path-affirming Beautiful and amazing week of tribe and love and full classrooms and lots of clients and can't wait to go back next year. We have all kinds of more fun things planned for my week next year. And the really exciting immediate news that came out of it is that Joy uh, Koff, who is a very gifted, wonderful person and psychic and the owner of Miracles of Joy, and I are going to start doing a series of webinars. And the first one will be on August 9th at 6 o'clock Pacific time. And anywhere you are in the world, you can take the class. And it's just a, it's just going to be an hour and a half class. May bleed over with questions into two hours or so. And um, I'm going to be here and she's going to be there. And uh, I'm going to be reteaching my empath class uh, that I taught uh, in Texas last weekend. And actually I'm going to kind of do a little bit of, a, of an upgrade to it, make it almost sort of like a next level class. And kind of an empath class and healing center and my first webinar and thank you joy for that beautiful suggestion and then i'm back there in november and uh october november for the embrace your spirit conference so in the meantime always the bear of exciting news the wonderful rebecca haywood hello my friend Am I really? always <laughs> you've always got something cooking oh yeah you're I always guess. cooking something up yeah shaman. i guess so i guess look so. at how tan you are i am what have you been doing i don't know laying I out in the sun no i like walk and 
sometimes run when I'm <laughs> being a good girl. In the sunshine? <laughs> Yeah, well, you can't really escape the sunshine here in LA. All the way out there in the sun. All the way out there in the sun. Really, you could have the bare naked sun. Could have fooled me that you can't escape the sun in LA. I know, right? I look like Casper's grandmother today. Uh Well, we definitely hit hit July weather that everybody promised me. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Oh, this isn't our normal July. This is our normal April. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're having a really mellow year. Well, I gotta say, I love April and July. Isn't this isn't Mm -hmm. this beautiful? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the weather's wonderful. Just in time for the fourth and. It's good to have you here, my friend. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing well. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm very grateful for today's solar eclipse and new moon upon us. Yeah. How do the eclipses make you feel? Well, boy, last one was very intense because uh, where I was living out in Idaho, we were in the path of totality, mm. the total eclipse that we had. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll you, share you, that video with you. It's oh, really you cool. you see the whole thing with the whole complete darkness. Oh, yeah. It was wow. so cool. Yeah. You know, and I, I mean, I, I could feel the intensity today, but it, not like, oh yeah, my I God, can feel that the was intensity today. really intense when yeah. we're, yeah, 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 yeah. I woke up this morning and I'm like, first of all, the cat will not stop talking. <laughs> and that's usually an indication that something is going on. Mm. Um, I had forgotten what it's like to be around the talking Scorpio cat that talks all the time. <laughs> I was in Texas where no one almost ever talks. And I'm like, oh, God, that's right. I come back here and the cat talks all the time. And she missed me. So she's talking a lot, Mm -hmm. yelling at me, giving me a hard time, reminding me never to leave again, which then, (laughs) of course, today I did because I'm the worst mom ever. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm really feeling this time, maybe because of the eclipse, I'm really feeling the difference in the pace with which Texas moves. Yeah. And we move. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's probably just because of the eclipse because I normally don't notice that. But I'm feeling it today. Yeah, you notice, I, at least uh, I, I notice time more. There's something about the light and the time mm-hmm. that really shifts for me. Texas has really gotten under my skin and really mm-hmm. gotten into my soul. Yeah? Yeah, I really love it there. I do. I really, I really, really, really love it there. I never thought I would say that, but I love, I love the loud locusts and the, the screaming crickets and the... I could see you in a white bucket hat. <laughs> <laughs> you walk outside and go, <gasps> from the heat. I mean, I don't, I don't love that part, but it's a very, it's very dry heat, which is nice. But yeah, I, yeah I, I do. And I'm, I'm so excited to, to that becoming a place that I spend more time mm-hmm. as I go out there more to work in Texas doing different things. So um, it, I can't even tell you what a wonderful, wonderful time it was. It was really, really amazing. And I, I thank all of my wonderful clients and students for being so beautiful. And I came home. I packed light because of my funky knees. I didn't want to carry like really crazy amounts of heavy suitcases through the airport. So I packed as light as I could. It was like a survival trip. It was like only bring what you need. And then people kept giving me beautiful things. Thank God I needed the room in my suitcases. So nice. Well, that's always nice when people give you beautiful things. Yeah. Wonderful things. Things for my knees. Like just all kinds of fantastic stuff. So it's nice to be loved. So what's new in your world, my friend? Well, well, I put I'm, this link out everywhere. I'm gearing up for, yeah, I got to do that too once you share it. Um, yeah, I'm gearing up for my next trip to Mexico, which is the first week in August. Beautiful. Uh, shameless Heart. So we've got a nice little group. It's I'm taking a very small, intimate group right now. There's still space for folks if they want to jump in. It's not too late. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a beautiful journey to Teotihuacan, Mexico, the place where man becomes God which I like to say human because, man, you know, we're really talking about all of us. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's an amazing place. Is that, place what, the, is that amazing... what it's called? The place where man becomes God? That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, the place is really set up as a map for your transformation. It's wow. very, very cool. So, you know, I don't always follow the exact old path of the apprentices because sometimes spirit tells me to do it different. Sometimes we go backwards. <laughs> okay. I guess that's the kind of girl I am. <laughs> All right. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Start as the light and work back to our domestication. That's See fine. it from a different point of view. But I don't know what we're going to do this time. I never really know. Yeah. I never plan I show anything. Up. Yeah. No. It's the best way. Someone right? said to me the other day, how do you, so when you do your classes, what do you do? Do you prepare? And I'm like, no. Well, I have to write a synopsis so they can put it on their website. Right. Right. But, but yes, yeah, but I found myself over the, over the weekend thinking, wait a minute, I guess I better grab that flyer. <laughs> what did I tell people I was going to do? Yeah. And just uh, make sure I cover everything I claimed in the synopsis that people, you know, in essence paid for. Right. Because I just channel. Yeah. I just sit there and let spirit tell me what it's going to be. Yeah. Which is why the class is never the same twice mm-hmm. because I just channel. 
Yeah. We well, want- and it's spirit, and it's also the people that show up, right? Right. It's what they're calling for, what they're their yearning, their desire, their heart is beating yeah. for in that moment. So. Absolutely. People are like, is it going to be a different class? And I'm like, well, yeah, because I don't know what I did Friday. <laughs> it's got to be because I don't have any idea what I did last class. So Right. Um, yeah, but it's, it's you know, it's, uh, I, I don't know. I, one of my goals was to teach more this year, and I certainly am teaching more this year. So. Yeah. What about you? You're going to teach more this year, too. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Am I allowed to announce uh, well, I mean, I, mean, we I guess we can't announce the time slot until we talk. Yeah, to, we don't know the time slot yet. Right, we have to figure out a time slot but um, it, because it, there might be a blip in the road with that, and we may have to figure that out. All so. right. Well, we will figure that out. Um, but you can announce what we're hoping to do in the next couple of weeks if you want to. I didn't. I said there was something cooking that included you, <laughs> me, and LA Talk Radio, and that was well, all I was going to say. I can't resist. Go I'm ahead. So You're excited, allowed to. Elated to announce that I am going to be doing. A radio show, my own show here at LA Talk Radio Yay. every week. And uh, as Sheena said, we don't quite have the ta- time right. slot sorted out yet. Well, we should be able to announce that maybe by tomorrow. Yeah. And so it's very exciting. It's going to be called Shameless Feminine. But men, don't be disappointed. It's for you, too, because we all have a relationship with the feminine yes. within ourselves and outside of ourselves with Mother Earth, with the divine feminine all around us. So, yes, Shameless Feminine, and stay tuned because it's going to be incredible, and Sheena is, like, being so sweet, and she's going to engineer the show for me and sit second chair so I'm not just sitting there talking to thin air all the time. Uh, I talk to thin air. However, yeah, I'm pretty good at talking to I'll myself. be in the <laughs> chat room talking to you all while yeah. Rebecca's doing the first part of the show and talking. I'll be in kind of the chat liaison. I'll be setting up phone calls if, when we take calls. Mm-hmm. I'll be helping to coordinate guests when guests are in studio or on the phone. And sometimes I'll talk when Rebecca wants me to. Yeah. Mostly I'll just sit here and be like, <laughs> just be rah, rah. Yeah. It's going to be so much fun. We're Each show will focus on, and maybe even each month, because, you know, these topics can really need more than just an hour. That's what we're going to start with, just one hour show. And um, yeah, so each show will really focus on what I call a different superpower of the mm-hmm. divine feminine. Um, or just of the, the feminine within us. If we're starting and, with a one hour show, then I don't think we have a problem with the time slot. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I like yesterday, I was like, I really feel like we're going to need two hours. <laughs> well, when we need two hours, we might need to talk about the time slot. But yeah. I think that time slot you wanted for an hour will be fine. Okay. Cool. It's going to be on Psychic Tuesday. It's going to be an extension of Psychic Tuesday if you're not already. Most likely. Me. Most likely. Fingers most, crossed. Most likely. No, that's yeah. not the problem. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. It, was, it was the length. It's okay. the length. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. There might be something already in the other hour you wanted, but in uh, the first hour, it's perfect. Fight fine. them for it. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, people. I'm just, I'm just honored to uh, be able to do it. It's very exciting. So, um, we're so excited to have you here. Yeah. So, well, I love it. It's, uh, it's going to be fun, and I can't wait for people to see everything you have to say and, and uh, everything that you have to share. Yeah, yeah. The, the format is, uh, I mean, we'll see what happens when we show up and do it. But right now what I'm dreaming is the format is going to be where I sit and kind of give a bit of a teaching, a channeling, a message about that particular superpower and then open it up for discussion, whether that is through the audience that you guys can ask questions or maybe you'll email me ahead because you'll know what the topic is, share something that you struggle with. And, um, or Sheena and I will just, uh, make each other laugh or and she'll ask Sheena make and maybe fun I'll, of ourselves. Maybe I'll say something. Yeah. And that isn't, that's, that's pertinent to the conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, it's going to be, uh, I think really beautiful. It's, it's going to be a beautiful be show really beautiful. and it's going to be us. So what's there not to like about it? It's us. <laughs> it's, and you see what we do here on Lightworkers and Rebecca, of course, is going to continue to come and do these broadcasts and always to be a guest on all my shows here at LA talk radio because um, it's just the family is growing. So yeah, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. It's going to be really fun. Very fun. Um, uh, what, um, wh- what, what do you, how do you get through things like these? This has been a month or two of crazy solar storms, moon things, sun things, meteor showers, that really bizarre full moon when we looked into the vortex of the universe. I mean, it's, it's been now <laughs> the, the eclipse. Or what? Yeah. 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 We basically, uh, you looked up the ass of inner space and <laughs> saw our own reflection. What, what, uh, you know, how, how, if, as somebody who's very tapped in, 
not just to the beyond, but to actually the pulse of the earth itself. Mm -hmm. How do you get over that? That, um, you know, whoo, all the changes we've had in the last, really since the middle of April. So it's mm -hmm. been going on two and a half months now of a really intense solar and lunar and galactic activity. Yeah, so uh, I, I mean, it really always depends, but generally speaking, it's about maintaining my presence with myself. So sometimes that means that I'm spending more time by myself, physically by myself, definitely a lot of time in nature. Um, but generally speaking, you know, we are part of um, this earth. We are organic beings. And as long as we keep our presence with ourselves and with our body and honoring its rhythms, then we tend to be kind of shifting with, with the planet as it's shifting yeah. and with the stars. And it has really shifting. been shifting. It really has. And I, I mean, I was telling my friend T last night that like the last three weeks, it's like I looked up yesterday and was like, what? happened <laughs> to the last three weeks like i know i was here mm -hmm. i know i did things you know like you things happened i did things with you but i just felt like i was slightly not quite as present as i usually am so that was sort of an interesting yeah. thing to notice but generally speaking i i do what i can to stay grounded rest my body you know you just got to listen to your body if it's yeah. tired rest if it's feeling an excess of energy then go for a run go for a walk um, ground yeah. yourself be in nature uh, water for me is a really amazing conduit I believe it is for most people but mm -hmm. you know I love my bath times uh, so you know that's something that I do for myself as a, a nurturing practice yeah and Ellie's a tricky lady um, yeah. she will sweep you up and you'll lose big periods of time yeah you, maybe you will get swept <laughs> into, the, into her vortex and yeah. perhaps see your own reflection and perhaps not. Yeah. It, yeah. There, is a, there is a sweeping that happens quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I was active. I was even semi-social. But basically, like, since the Bruins lost, I think I was just slightly depressed. <laughs> is that what it is? I think I was just slightly depressed. The yeah. Bruins lost and you yeah, just my went boys. inside yourself? My boys, my Tuca. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I don't normally feel it. I mean, I feel it, but it doesn't normally affect me. But maybe in the middle of the shifting. And also, I think because I've been recovering from this injury, mm. the build up to going on this trip that I was very worried about taking because I was worried that physically I wasn't going to be able to handle it. Yeah, I think the build up to that. And now I have sort of that day after Christmas. Feeling. Well, and you've been doing so much good things for your body, but it's also, you know, energy when we're. We're doing that much. <clears throat> yeah. Mean, it's great. A lot yeah. of healing work. But there's a lot of processing and digesting that's happening when we're healing. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's true. You know, when I'm going through big, deep healing moments, I mean, I just knock out sometimes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's nap time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not. And, and yesterday I got stuck in the airport for long. Oh, did you? We got grounded. In Phoenix? For weather? Yeah. No, in in, uh, in Dallas. For weather huge, in Dallas? Huge storm in Houston. Oh. No, huge storms the whole while we were there. Oh, wow. Yeah, the kind that like pick up the giant patio furniture and throw them in the pool. Well, there yeah. was some crazy, um, T was telling me about some crazy hailstorm in Guadalajara, like hailed like five feet. Oh. Like cars were buried. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mexico City. <laughs> Almost to the roofs. Yeah, five and a half inches of hail. Oh, it was Mexico City? I thought yeah. she was like Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Mexico City. Could oh, have been. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, well, come to Mexico <laughs> where we swim and hail. <laughs> come on my journey, my retreat to Mexico. I promise you it's lovely. <laughs> Rebecca's fantastic journey. Uh, it's a it's going to be in the middle of August and you're going to be catching hail balls and bringing them home in a box. Right. That's it. Making snowmen. That's well, you fantastic. know, my grandmother, I am a shaman and my grandmother did teach me how to talk to the elements. And she always used to joke that the elements are much more obedient than we are. So, so, you know, we'll just, we'll all talk to the elements together. We'll make yeah. sure we, we don't have to swim our if way I out of talk hail. To the elements, <laughs> to the elements. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. So here's okay. Our okay. Wanna, she says, sure. Talk to the elements. If you want to no get problem. on the air with us today, it's so easy. It's just uh, 818-437-0886. Send me a text. Oh, if you want a free reading, healing, spiritual counseling, we're putting this link up everywhere so everyone can join us. I see folks are in the chat room now. I will go and make sure to put the link there. I believe we're also streaming on YouTube right now, which is fantastic. So 818-437-0886. That's my cell. You have to oh, send wow. me a text. And then I will make sure to um, get you in the system. We will call you 
and get you on the air with Rebecca and me for, you know, psychic advice, spiritual advice, paranormal advice, free reading, free healing, spiritual counseling, anything else, anything else you can think of. Just whatever you, it's whatever you want. Just it's, call us. We'll talk. It's our 4th of you July know. present to you. We'll talk. It's Two girls good. from New England will give you what you want because we can <laughs> We, we can, we make can talk hockey. I mean, exactly. <laughs> Rebecca wants to talk about hockey. No, not really. I don't know. I can talk about early American history with you, but I don't know anything about hockey. I don't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've never been to a hockey game. Huh. I seen hockey once. I think when I was a figure skating as a child. I know that's an image you don't think of when you think about me. Um. So why don't why don't you talk a little bit? It's it's kind of a. I'll warn you out the gate. I had Shauna Grace on today doing Haunted Playground with me. It's kind of a bizarre, it's kind of a bizarre week. I think it's so close to 4th of July, a lot of people are out of town. So we might just wind up chit-chatting a little bit today, which we never get to do on these shows. Oh, well, I'm kind of excited about I'm that. I'm kind of excited about it, too. Yeah, it's fun. So um, what, um, what is the essence of Shameless Feminine? I mean, what would you like the Shameless Feminine radio show for people to get from it and for it to be about? Yeah, so... Um Sorry, I'm trying to share this link, but it's not letting me. Um, so I'll get it up on my on my page. If, if you guys are looking for it on my um, Shaman Sister Facebook page, it'll be up in a moment. It's on my personal timeline on Facebook, but not on my business page yet. So Shameless Feminine, you know, Shameless Feminine to me really is that place that of shamelessly shameless. Mm. You know, it's not just that I'm this brazen feminist that is rising up it's you know we have risen we are here and it's not about over the masculine you know it's not down with the masculine down with the man it's about hand in hand in balance masculine and feminine standing together and that's where that shamelessly shameless comes in you know without shame and without blame mm. you know that we are women that we no longer need the villain you know why because we aren't victimized by our femininity uh, and so it's really not a feminist movement, although it is very feminist in principle at the heart of it in that sense of, yeah, we can do and be whatever we want uh, to lift all of that shame that we as women and ha as men have been holding against the feminine in ourselves for centuries. You know, how long has the woman essentially been cast out of the garden, right? Mm. Eve. Yeah. 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 And She was and, out of the garden a lot longer than she was in that garden. Yeah. That's for sure. I know. She didn't really get to eat very much of that <laughs> fruit. So, yeah. So it really goes way back and deep into, like, the ancient and into ourselves. And that's why it is for both men and women, because we all carry this. Uh, I mean, I would love to to have a, a large male audience because I know how many carry guilt on behalf of us, you know, because they know what's been done as well. Mm -hmm. They see it being done. Uh, and so there's, there's a healing that needs to happen here. And we are, we are, we have risen. We have arrived. We are here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the mother gave me this beautiful message back in Teotihuacan like three years ago. Uh, we were actually down in the temple of women and I was working with all the women doing womb healing, which is usually what I'm called to do in that place. There's this really cool big well, like this portal that opens up into the earth. And, you know, the guards always let me open it. And we get to kind of do this connection with the earth and do this womb healing. And all these women had tremendous healing. We were already there for like a couple hours. And the men were so beautifully just holding space and supporting the women and Next thing I know, this energy is just telling me, like, kick the women out, talk to the men. And that's really when the message of the shameless feminine came through, is when the divine feminine, the divine mother, was coming through me to deliver this message to the men. So that's why, you know, it's really interesting. In title, it appears that it's really just for women, but it's not. It's for all of us. Um, not only do we all carry that feminine aspect within ourselves and that we all are in relationship with the feminine outside of ourselves, in life, with Mother Earth, with the Divine Feminine. However, we all have been the feminine as well, embodied, right? Sure. From I, life to life. Yeah, from life to life. I have been a man in my past life. You have, have a, a man has been a woman in his past life. So we can all relate to, to what that energy is that we carry and to that shame that we have been carrying. And, you know, 
generally when we're feeling shame, not generally, but sometimes when we're feeling shame, what is the reaction? But to find the blame to try and empower ourselves through that blame. And I just, I'm ready. And I know that there's so many women that are ready for the pendulum to stop swinging. And I, and I sure as heck know just about every man in my life is ready for that pendulum to stop swinging, mm. you know, and come yeah. to rest in that place of balance, you know, where we're not so polarized um, in, in our gender and just in our way of being with each other and within ourselves. Well, I think the way that the, and then we have to take a call really quick. Um, I, I think the, uh, if you want to get on with us, 818-437-0886, text that number and, and I'll get your number in our system. I think the problem with the way the male patriarchy has gone up until now is it's not so focused on male energy or feminine energy. It's, it's a bully mentality. Mm. And the problem is, is that as, as one gender has bullied another, as men have bullied women throughout time, women then have become bullies to each other Mm -hmm. and then bullies to men. Yeah. So everybody's become a bully. And so when I think about when people say, let's, let's get rid of the, 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 the traditional male patriarchy, what comes to my mind always is let's get rid of the bullying. Let's humans stop bullying each other Mm -hmm. because all it's done is built up resentment between the genders Mm -hmm. when the truth is we're more alike than we are different. Gender is a really silly thing for all of us to base our entire socio-political cultural essence on. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are only just a tiny bit different. Mostly they're the same. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we put so much emphasis on that and use that as an excuse to bully each other and to have and to and to separate each other and to divide each other to me that makes me sad Mm -hmm. well and i think the biggest difference between you know genders so to speak is the experience is what we experience as we're walking through the world you know for me it's as a woman it's it's I, i i and i grew up with three brothers so i can really see that disparity of just what is accepted and what is not accepted yeah um, what is expected and what is not expected. Yes. And, uh, you know, and I think that, that you're right. There is just a lot of misunderstanding about, you know, as this feminine has been rising again, this feminine energy and women and all of us have really been embracing, uh, you know, what we characterize as feminine kind of superpowers, you know, emotionality, sensuality, you know, that playfulness, uh, you know, there's a little misunderstanding about that. Uh, and, you know, between quote unquote genders or just between people. And, right. you know, I think that. Well, but that's the bully mentality again, right? Uh, yeah. Even I when guess. you think about um, the Me Too movement and, and the sexual predator movement, I mean, not movement, but the, the, the way to fight back now at people who are sexual predators or rapists or most people flirting are flirting in a fun and loving way. Yeah. But then the bullies get in the middle of it. And then it becomes, ruins it for everybody. And I think that's what, if we could think of the way to balance the gender, the gender is not, like you said, women rise up and take men out, but women rise up as the mothers, the mother energy and say, no, 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 no more. Don't make me come back there. No more bullying. And we're going to find a place where we, where we coexist with each other in a more loving and peaceful space then we're just going to flip the system around and then women become the oppressors. I mean, that's not going to change anything. Right, and that's exactly... Oppressors need to stop oppressing. The idea is to pull the oppressors out of it, not to do now a gender reversal where women make all the rules and now it's get in the corner, you little worm. That's that doesn't that's not making anything any better. Right. It's it's not really at this point, at this moment, it's not the masculine that quote unquote put us here. No. You know, that's the shamelessly shameless aspect. Uh, we, uh, you know, I have perpetuated feminine shame as much as any other man, oh. you know, I mean, maybe not as much as, but really? certainly I've held it <laughs> within myself. That, <laughs> well, you've held it, it in you, mm-hmm. but you haven't held perpetuated it. it. Like you well, haven't thrown sure. your girlfriends under the bus. No, no. But within myself. Okay. Sure. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I did a lot, a lot of work on myself. I mean, my goodness, when I came to, um, Madre Sarita's doorstep, I was um, almost two years, no. Uh, Well, anyway, I had been celibate for a long time. A long, long time because I had, I held sex in that much shame for myself. Yeah. And, you know, looking at me now or not looking at me, but knowing me now, you wouldn't, you wouldn't guess that, that I had held that kind of shame about 
my beauty, about my sexuality, about my femininity. And I was such a tomboy. Uh, just I was fighting. I was my own bully. I was fighting my feminine. Um, and, you know, a lot of that was how I was raised. Now, did you hold any shame about being a tomboy? No. Okay. I was proud of that. Okay. Some <laughs> girls hold a lot of shame about not being like other girls. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, no, I, I, I was very proud of that. I, I judged women for being women. Okay. You know, I mean, I only really, like, started playing with being a woman, uh, uh, like, in, like, when I turned 30. Oh. Yeah. That was like, yeah, then, then it was like, okay, I'll play with makeup and, like, and oh. clothing and it's pay tough. attention to these things. It's tough. Tougher, than, girlier than me. I was, yeah. I'm girlier than that. <laughs> I think I was maybe. Well, now I think I do a pretty good job. I think I was probably I 15 know. when I got out of my tomboy thing. Yeah. I, I, I held it for a pretty long time. You did. I mean, I was like. You a, were a tomboy champion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was kind of a. I mean, I guess I branched out into sundresses, but. Yeah. You know, younger. Yeah. In college. You I waited a, later, I was a but then you dippy. really went for it. But yeah, I mean, like walking in heels, forget it. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, any outfit, it was it was for comfort. And like, I remember at one point, I, I literally dressed by color. I was a walking crayon. I was like, what color do I feel like today? Green. <laughs> <laughs> I was a walking crayon. Wow. So, yeah, the, I, I wasn't much of a, I wasn't very good at being a girl <clears throat> for a while there. All right. All right. So we're gonna the link get, is live on link. my we're up. Facebook page you now. You got to text people. me. We're getting Heather on the phone right now. 818-437-0886. That's 818 437 Zero eight eight six. That makes sense. What I said about the patriarchies, the male patriarchy, and the women. We're gonna rise up, and it's like, yes, but isn't rising up like, isn't the isn't a one isn't the best kind of leader that we want? Someone who rises up, and then when they're in control, says, and now love for everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what benevolent. That's to me, that's what the divine feminine leadership should be. Yeah, I believe that it's like a mothering embrace. Let's it's rise up and take care of the, of the oppression, mm -hmm. but you don't take care of the oppression by oppressing the oppressors. Right. You take care of the oppression by hopefully finding a way to reach the individuals that are oppressing. Because mm -hmm. a whole gender of humanity is not oppressing another gender of humanity. Mm -hmm. There are people in within it, mm -hmm. you know, just like there are people everywhere that oppress. Yeah. I've been oppressed by everybody. Please, just stop oppressing me. <laughs> Becca's like, I'm not letting you sit second chair on my show because there's something really wrong with you. <laughs> Heather, welcome to the show. How are you? Good. How are you? It's wonderful to hear your voice. Say hi to Rebecca and how may we help you? Hi, love. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Hi. I um, had a question. I um, kind of wanted to know about my husband's career path. He just um, recently went back to school as a refresher course. Okay. Um, in a field of work he used to do. Okay. Um, so I know he's a little nervous about that, if he's going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And if there was, he's been wanting to hear from, or maybe get a message from his father, who um, passed away quite a bit ago. Okay. Well, let's talk about his career first, because you asked that first. Um, okay. I mean, yes. I mean, he was successful at it before, and he will be again. But but it, it seems almost like, is he sure it's what he wants to do? Because it kind of feels like he doesn't know what he wants to do, so he thought, oh, okay, I'll go back to that. I mean, is it something mm. that's passionate for him, or is it something that he just thinks is maybe what he should do because it seems like a way that, that he could be successful? Because he will be. He was always successful at it. Yeah, I I think he's he's feeling um I think he wants to do a little bit more than he used to. Okay. In um this field. Okay. That's good. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's he's he was good at it before. I I just feel like I mean, I think it's great that he took the refresher course. I think he's going to do well at it, but I feel like under that there's there's an underlying thing under that with him where he's kind of in a place where he's just not quite sure what he wants. Does that make sense? Yeah. Not yeah, just in career, but in general. And I think that if he's looking to, for a message from his dad, that's absolutely what he's getting right now. And it's, it's that he needs to figure out 
what he really wants from life. Because what his dad wants more than anything, sweetie, is for him to be happy. And it just mm-hmm. seems sometimes like he's not happy. Like he's just like That's he's true. like he's dissatisfied with a little bit of everything. And it's trying to find what's going to make him happy. And, and, and that's what his father's telling him is find that thing. Yeah, that, that's true. I agree with that. Rebecca? Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm, I am feeling that um, what, what Sheena was talking about, that, that little kind of dispassion. Mm. Um, but I just would describe it maybe just as that... Um, like a residual grief um, that doesn't mm-hmm. quite, that hasn't quite wanted to grab onto life again yet. And, yeah. you know, and that's uh, what I hear is just kind of like, go, go get it, go get it, son, go get it. Um, okay. Uh, and, and really b- before Sheena started talking, I really kind of wanted to ask you like, but what about you? Mm. So there's a lot going on with me. That's probably mm-hmm. a whole nother show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you don't have to share. I just want to share with you that it's just don't forget about you. You know, don't forget mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. that, it, you know, it's okay to take care of you. And actually, it will help to empower your husband more um, if you let him take care of him. If you do a little bit less for him, um, he will step into that power more. And, you know, this is one of those shameless feminine superpowers, that power of mothering. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we use it against ourselves and against the men in our lives. And I'm certainly been guilty of it. And so be mindful of that mothering capacity of you. Um, we don't want the mothering turning into smothering. And I don't mean smothering in the sense of being all up in his face. I just mean smothering in terms of like, like almost smothering a fire, you know, when, Mm. when there's a need, you know, you can relate to this from that mothering energy. When there's a need, we, we rise to meet the call, right? We suddenly have energy, right? right? We have strength, physical strength where we didn't have it before. Uh, we know what we need to do. There's all the doubt goes out of the mind when there's a need, when there's an emergency, we just act and we are pure faith in action. And so that's what happens when a need arises. And so allow yourself to soften in his presence a little bit. Allow yourself, not that you have to kill the mothering. Okay. The mothering is a beautiful thing. And just take breaks from it. Take breaks from it. Let him care for you. Sure. Let you care for you be a little less available to him, but not out of a game plan, just out of you being present for you and you having a focus for you. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll find that there comes a lot more balance in your relationship with each other and that he himself is rising to your needs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and I think to, to sort of bounce off what Rebecca said, in the, in the mothering slash smothering category, Heather. I think that it it's not even so much like a controlling kind of smothering with you as it's that you've had so many disappointments in your life that you tend to be almost like um, sort of the, uh, the harbinger of, of, of possibilities of what could happen be careful, be careful, this could happen because oftentimes not in your life so like that. that has happened, right? I think yeah. the problem is because you've sort of built an outer crust to deal with all those things that have happened or you would have gone crazy. It doesn't affect you when you talk about that stuff, but it affects him because he has um, sort of a, a little propensity for depression. Yes. And he tends to feel very defeated when you tell him everything that could go wrong. And okay. um, I know it's your defense mechanism. It's how you protect yourself. But maybe it's what you need to tell yourself sometimes and not not verb, let not use that same verbiage with him. Does that make sense? Because yeah. then he starts to spin out. 
thinking about everything that could go wrong and how he's not going to make it and he's not going to be successful and what's going to happen and this isn't going to work. And then he freaks out and you're just kind of like, what? I was just telling you the possibilities. So I think yeah, it's oh just God, that is dead yeah, on. <laughs> right. So I think it's just a yeah. difference in how you verbalize things and, and how, how you would deal with something, your emotional survival kit, what's in yours and what's in his. And there's just two different, some different stuff in both kits. And so he has, mm -hmm. he can't deal with what's in yours as much. So just think about when you talk to him about something that really needs to be addressed or you're addressing his issues or things he's brought up with you, try to think about giving him an answer back that more fits his ideology than yours. Because he's a sensitive okay. soul and he withdraws. And, yeah. and it's, that's not good for him. And that's kind of what I was talking about, what I was feeling in the beginning with the job is that he, 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 he only allows himself to have so much passion for something because there's a part of him that always thinks that somewhere along the line, he's going to screw it up. Mm -hmm. And True. I would like to see him grow out of that and into a place where he feels more, more, confident going into situations okay he's his own worst enemy yes and boy does his father want him to fix that okay <laughs> you know yeah somehow his father's involved in that okay i mean is, is that a conversation he had with his father when his father was alive is that something his father already told him um, what I get is I don't think he feels like he got the conversations before his dad passed okay, away. Okay, well then that makes sense too that his father didn't have the chance to tell him that. But there's something about that specific conversation that his father is, you know, waving his hands all over the place at me about. Yeah, he, he always wanted to know if his dad was ever proud of him at, you know, any point or or the whole time. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And then that is exactly where it stems from that he didn't get his father is involved in that conversation. Yes. Tell him uh, absolutely resoundingly his father is saying yes. Okay. So he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. And what his father wants is for him to have more confidence in himself. And he's sorry if, okay. if he was to blame in any way for your husband not feeling that confidence. Okay. And I think it's totally funny the way that you deal with things. You can always call me and use that weird sense of humor, but <laughs> just not with him. All right, sweetheart. <laughs> okay. All right. Take care. Give we get, we send you our love. We send your husband, our love. And you know, his father is sending love and, um, I don't know. There's just lots of love. If you want to get on the air with us, like Heather did 818-437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. 0886. You're a, a kind of a, a rare bird of all of my friends in the sense that you have both your parents with you still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you find that makes you a rare bird? I don't know. Not particularly. Uh, Do most of your friends still have their parents? <sighs> I guess um, I'd say maybe 50 50 okay. at this point. All right. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. M most people, almost everybody I know doesn't. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. My best friend has her mom still. Most people, it was everybody, I thought everybody, 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 and then right around the time mine passed in that five-year period between the two when my parents passed, it was like uh, so many people lost theirs. Yeah. It's hard when they go and you don't feel like you've had the conversation you need to have with them. Yeah. So I will tell you, as somebody who has both of them here, have every conversation you want to have with them. I do my best. Okay, good. Yeah. Just checking. I do my best. There's there's very little that goes unsaid in my relationships. <laughs> People right. who are close to me know that. Okay. <laughs> very little goes unsaid on my end anyway. And yeah. And I present myself as an open door that people could say, feel, say what they feel. Good. Mean but what they say, say but what it's they different feel. with parents. I mean, parents are hard. Even if you are that person, parents are hard. 
Yeah. It's hard to be honest with your parents about how you feel. And it, it's, there's just a lot of baggage tied up around parents, I think. I think we all have that. Well, and it's, I think it's just, it's not always productive. You know what I mean? The communication is mm-hmm. not always productive mm-hmm. um, or necessary. You know, it's, sometimes we just, it's, it's for us to, um, it's something for us to heal and to learn from. And, I mean, there's certainly, not necessarily speaking about my parents, but there's certainly relationships that I've had and, you know, very, very close that it's just like, you know, you, you don't get to have that conversation. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, and I've certainly worked with people who had a parent specifically that passed that, you know, felt that they needed that forgiveness and now they can't get it because they have passed. Mm-hmm. And it's just not That's true. That's why I say tell them everything you ever wanted to tell them while they were alive. Everybody. Yeah. But, everybody. Yeah. But you can. That conversation, it can still happen. Of course and it I can. And I don't mean because their spirit is still here. I of mean because that can. conversation is really between you and your own heart. It, it's you true. You know, yes. even when we're in person, you and I, let's say we had a, some kind of altercation. I can't imagine we would, but what happened? you never know. I mean, I don't know. Did you I say you ate all the Nutella, maybe? I, <laughs> I ate the last artisan churro. Yeah. That's our jam. We eat artisan churros artisan together. Churros. That's the most douchey LA thing. Oh, Rebecca and I go out and we have artisan, we have artisan churros, churros together. Yeah, it's not that um, frou-frou. It's just churro stuffed with Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> and Rebecca also gets like a weird coffee that's like laced in Nutella. Oh, God. I won't do that ever Nutella again, though. That was, that was, that yeah. was bizarre. Yeah, I might have licked some of the Nutella yeah. off her cup. Yeah. She, she I might did. have. It was good. Just a little. Good now. Well, that was the best part of the coffee, really. Um, but yeah, you know, even with those of us living in our lives and we seek to have that conversation and we seek to be forgiven, Mm -hmm. you know, we don't really actually receive that forgiveness from them until we forgive ourselves. That is absolutely true. You know, they, somebody can say, you are forgiven. I forgive you. Don't worry. It really wasn't a big deal. But if you're still shaming yourself, then, um, yeah, you're, you're, you aren't forgiven yet. Mm -hmm. So, that's the that's the big thing I think for a I lot agree. of a and lot of people who have close relationships that have ended or whether it's because of a death or just the relationship ended. And that I don't know if it's a Scorpio thing, but for me it's like I it's hard for me to have an unfinished conversation mm. in my life, mm-hmm. you know. I Scorpios want those conversations. Don't like unfinished business. Yeah. No, no we want to no, yeah. they get mad at you if you don't want to have that conversation. <laughs> yeah. I know I grew inside one. Yeah. And you don't feel good until things are resolved with the Scorpio. You don't feel so great until that happens. Yeah. And yet, you know, we don't, we don't really get that resolution from another. We get it from ourselves. And so for me, I mean, I just, I'm a writer. So I write it out. I have that conversation on, on paper. Yeah. And it works for me. Yeah. I'm a talker. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I can, I'm a writer, but mm-hmm. I'm mostly a talker. Mm-hmm. Even if I, sometimes I just, I tell people, I tell my clients all the time, go sit somewhere quiet and have a conversation with yourself. Mm. Say it out loud to yourself what you want to do. Yeah. Because there's something, there's an, there's an energy to saying something out loud. Mm-hmm. Even if there's no one in the room to hear it, just you and you and you and the universe, say it out loud. Mm-hmm say this doesn't make me happy or I don't want this or I want to fix this or I need to change this. Mm-hmm. Yep. As a matter of fact, I had a breakthrough today. Oh yeah? Yeah. It may or may not have been on the toilet. We had this whole discussion in Dallas, one of the people one of my uh, students in my class, this whole discussion about if you say you can't meditate because you're too busy, you have time in the toilet and time in the shower. Mm-hmm. And I added time in the car. Um, and then I thought, okay, then I, well, I'm going to have a breakthrough on the toilet today. And then, boom, I did. <laughs> what kind toilet of breakthrough? breakthrough <laughs> boom, toilet boom. breakthrough. Uh, one of those breakthroughs where you think, oh, I now know how I'm going to handle this thing. I haven't been able to figure out how to handle. And it's so perfect. It's, I hope I can remember exactly the way that I worded on the toilet. Because I was going to grab my phone and word it. And then I forgot. So, yeah. But I know what I know the outline of what it is. And it's like a perfect thing and once it's out there and I put it out there and it's going to be closure and that's it's what I needed yeah yay yay I feel shamelessly feminine now. 
All right, we're going to get Kat on with us. If you want to get on with us, it's so easy. Just send a text, 818-437-0886. Send me a text at 818-437-0886, and then we will get you on the phone with us like we're going to do right now with Kat. How exciting is that? And uh, with poor Kat, she had to sit and wait for my toilet breakthrough story because that's how we roll here (laughs) on Lightworkers Unite. All right, we're calling Kat right now. A different kind of toilet breakthrough. Yep. Just popped into my head and I went, oh, man, that's how I'm going to handle that. And it's fantastic because it's going to give me closure. And then at the same time, others are going to learn. It's going to give others healing, others soothing healing. It, it, it's Sometimes the universe is like, see, we told you we we're going to send you the perfect thing. <laughs> and there it is. Welcome to the show, Kat. How are you, my friend? Oh, hi. Hi, Sheena. It's so nice to see you again. It's nice to see you too, my friend, even though we're seeing each other long with our time. ears. Well, it's been a long time. We have met, but it was of a course. long time ago. Of course we have. Sure we have. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's nice, to, it's nice to see you again, but with our ears because we're on the phone. It's, um, it's wonderful to talk to you about this type of uh, concept. Because, you know, I returned back to school. I've been a musician for years, and I've returned back to school. And uh, it's like a new planet for me, a new brainwave, a new everything. And how do you handle all the stress? Well, you know what? I've learned to meditate. Mm. And uh, I started playing around with a lot of those, uh, like, headspace, that kind of stuff that you can download on your phone. But I realize it has to do within your own mind, your mindset, and what you're willing to do. And that's why I'm so excited to talk to you ladies today. Mm. Mm. I love that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, We're glad to talk to you. What's on your mind, my friend? Well, I would like to know, you know, ask someone who's a little bit older, you know, we're not gone, we're not forgotten, but um, how do you like? you know, take the anxiety down when you know you're either a wife or a mother or you're this or that. So everybody has a role they play, don't they? Everybody says, well, there's no time to think. How do we get ourselves to where we can nurture our souls, nurture our spirits and to feel better? So I'd like to know on career and, you know, and on personal endeavors, you know, how do we know what's right? How do we learn to feel it? Hmm. Hmm. Um, okay. So, um, Rebecca, do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? Uh, either way. <laughs> I've gotcha. I've gotcha. If you want me to. Yeah, go ahead. I could uh, tell you were ready to go. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I use this word a lot, but, um, the word is presence and it's the answer to both of your questions. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, there's a wonderful book if you, um, it, it's a very short book, and it's a very pleasant read, and it's called Being Peace, like to be, being, peace, mm. uh, by Thich Nhat Hanh. Mm-hmm. And it's just a wonderful place to bring in kind of what Jenny was saying of uh, that we can meditate throughout our day. But it's an even um, deeper approach to it in that it's not necessarily a separate time that you're sitting down to meditate, or it's like, okay, meditate, start now. It's, uh, it's how to bring what he calls mindfulness and what I would call presence into everything that you're doing so that even doing the dishes becomes a meditation in itself where you turn your complete attention to what it is that you're doing, right? That you are there and you, you feel the, the warm water on your hands. You can smell the floral aroma of the soap. You know, you, uh, you, you breathe, you stay with your body. Uh, you know, you, you, you go into that moment and it actually becomes a pleasurable moment because what is so mm-hmm. beautiful about our human body is that it was actually um, built for pleasure. It was made for pleasure. You know, we, we have all these senses, you know, and that's, that's for pleasure. It's not just to simply receive information and to get smarter. Right? It's to experience life, to sense life, and to sense life within us. So using that practice of mindfulness that he teaches there, you'll 
find just, wow, how many times that you aren't being mindful, that you aren't mindfulness. Um, if I remember correctly how he described it, and this is how I'll describe it now, is basically just putting your mind into what you're doing, right? How many times are you doing the dishes right. and you're thinking about what you need to do next? And that's what's creating that anxiety because the to-do list is never done. You're never actually enjoying and having that moment of doneness or just of simply doing, right? Versus on to the next, on to the next, where you're never really present in that enjoyment of what's happening right now. And believe me, when I practiced this long time ago, it's like, wow, I never enjoyed doing dishes before, <laughs> you know? And it became such an enjoyable yeah. experience. Uh, and I suddenly understood, like, my aunt was that way. She loved doing dishes, and it was her escape from, like, the dinner party. She'd escape and go do dishes, and it was kind of her version mm -hmm. of meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, mindfulness, I call it presence, bringing your presence into the present moment. Whatever it is you're doing can become zen Your for presence you. is the present. Yes. Yes. Uh, and Right. Okay. I I've heard something about people say that when you live in the past, it creates um, depression. If you live in the future, you are creating anxiety mm -hmm. because if you're living in either or, you're not truly experiencing where you are. Yeah, and exactly. And there's a time and a there's a time and a place haha, for for retrospection, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And for dreaming. Right. But again, it's how are you bringing your presence to that? Are you present in that moment and very intentfully, mindfully dreaming a future for yourself or very intentionally, mindfully processing a moment of the past for yourself? Right. So it's not that the past yeah. and the future inevitably are going to cause depression or anxiety, but generally speaking with most people's relationship to their past and to the future. Yeah, that is a true statement. Mm. Uh, so moving forward in terms of your second question uh, of how do we know when something is right, and I'm doing air quotes, if you're not watching, I'm doing air quotes, um, right? Uh, well, <laughs> again, presence is the answer. Because if you are present in the moment in whatever action you're doing, let's say you're engaging with, maybe the question is your job, and you're really present in that, not thinking about the other options, the what ifs, um, not projecting yesterday's work day onto today's, you know, but just being present in today and showing up for today as today in the now and being present with your body. You know, your body is where your emotions live, right? And right. your emotions are such an amazing tool. To me, they are one of my senses. And through my emotions, I perceive myself, right? I can perceive immediately, like, am I abusing myself, right? Because, like, suddenly I'm, like, not feeling so good. <laughs> What's going on? Is that coming from me oh, or from so out there? Oh, that's so true, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so you can catch those moments when you're in that um, kind of self-deprecating voices that you're believing, right? And you can catch that moment because your emotions, you know, they won't lie to you. They'll react to a lie, but they won't lie to you. They'll say, yeah, that hurts. You know, that hurts. I'm hurting. Um, you know, so as you have that relationship with yourself, then you start to clean up those, that dialogue in your mind and mm -hmm. you start to shift that um, so that you, all the voices in the mind aren't talking quite so much and not creating that relationship with the future that is anxious or that relationship with the past that is regretful and thus depressed, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you so much. This is awesome. Yeah. And you know, sweetie, um, if I can jump in for a sec, <clears throat> you don't take anywhere near good enough care of yourself. I mean, just to sort of ping pong off of what Rebecca said, you are the last person that you take care of. You will get up at four o'clock in the morning and throw on your slippers and drive halfway across town to rescue some, you know, ragtaggled musician from something. But you don't take care of yourself. And, and more importantly, love, you don't ask for help. So you don't, you're not good at when you're not, you're better at giving than receiving. And universe. Oh, I think that's quite possible. You I think, know, I yes. think that anybody that tries to have a good heart and soul tries to be that way. But, you know. Well, but universe is trying to send you things. 
and and they're and you're having trouble receiving. Mm. So you need to open yourself up to be receptive to these wonderful things that could happen for you. Because I think you've kind of gotten to a place where you're like, is this stuff even ever going to happen for me? And you're sort of (laughs) losing faith in the fact that it's going to happen. So your story is becoming, I'm the person, I'm the girl things never happen for. And then the universe is like, we don't understand. We're trying to give you something, but supposedly you're the girl things never happen for. So we don't know what's like, we want to give you this lovely present, but you're not, your door's locked. Wow, that's impactful. Right? Okay, I didn't view it that way, but I do appreciate that. Of course, you didn't do it on purpose. You're not purposely saying, universe, I don't want any gifts. But you're just used to so busy trying to take care of everything else and worrying about everything else that you're your last priority. And universe is screaming at you, please, please, cat, please. Can you make you a bigger priority? Because... We have things we want to give you in this next phase of your life, and we want you to receive them and enjoy them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I accept that one. Good. I'll take it. And those things are like creativity and love (laughs) and friendship and tribe and, you know, good stuff, stuff that feeds your heart and nurtures your soul. This is what universe has laid out for you. I'll tell you what, Sheena, one day you got to let me come down and sing a song for you, okay? Absolutely. Done. Because it's been like 20 years or something since I've been able to, you probably don't even remember it for a long time. I remember I absolutely remember you. I sure would love to uh, play something for you. Done. See? Dream come true. Finished. You bet. Done. Yep. (laughs) Dream come true. Easy peasy. More of those to come. More to come, my friend. You take care of you. We love you. We just want the best for you. And uh, we want to know how you're doing and how you're how you're hanging and what's new and what's uh, what's going on with your dream. How much how you're letting the universe bring more dreams in. If you want to get on live with us, 818-437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. We've got some texts coming in, but people are not giving me their names. So um uh, so Rebecca, how, how hard is it for you to receive? Was that a journey for you to learn to receive? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. And I think, uh, what she said is a true statement that, um, healers, nurturers, caretakers, you know, we're, we're in that place of giving, 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 giving. And it's where we feel best is in that place and most comfortable in that place of giving. And, for me, and I know for a lot of people, it was very uncomfortable to move to a place of receiving mm. because of that self-worth piece, you know, and, it, you know, feminine, masculine, we all carry that kind of lack of worry. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Um, you know, but it's almost like we feel like we have to earn it mm. and that, and the story that we tell ourselves uh, kind of makes it so the carrot is always out in front that we can never actually take for ourselves Mm -hmm. um that there's some kind of sin to that to take for ourselves Mm -hmm. and yeah so yeah it was definitely a journey um and it wasn't so much a learning how to receive because it's actually very natural for our body for our animal for our being our soul to be receptive and as a healer we have to be receptive we're downloading right we're receiving Mm -hmm. energy on behalf of a client and so it was just about kind of receiving that on behalf of myself was uh, just a a shift in the story and a shift in that, a healing of that wound of unworthiness. And uh, really it was more of, instead of learning how to receive, I already knew how, I just had to unlearn how not to receive, Mm -hmm. you know, unlearn that practice. Uh, Which was also, I think for many, and it was for myself, sort of a defense mechanism uh, you know, I, as you know, I've been through a lot of trauma mm-hmm. and yes. so that's a defense mechanism. There was something to that. And that was also why I held up the tomboy for so long, because there was, um, a perception of weakness and vulnerability in receiving in, um, in my feminine and all of that, that I wasn't willing mm. to stand in and to 
allow that vulnerability to be. And really, you know, I could say that I love vulnerability now. It is one of my greatest superpowers and a superpower that I see in everybody. And I love it, love it, love it. Mm -hmm. And receiving to me is absolute surrender. It's yeah. just surrender. And uh, I take time for myself every day to just receive, to be in a place of I'm, I, I'm not wearing any hat. I'm not anything to anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just me, you know, out in nature usually or sitting in meditation, but it's for me. Yeah. You know, at some point I realized I had never actually prayed for myself. I had always prayed for another, mm -hmm. always, always, always. And, um, I'm not, I don't remember exactly when that shifted, but, um, it wasn't that long ago that I kind of woke up to that. I had been practicing receiving, but then all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, I haven't prayed for myself. I've never said a prayer for myself. It was very, very interesting. And there was a, a actual superstition in there that uh like i remember it was the same with shooting stars mm. make a wish on a shooting star mm -hmm. i always made it for somebody else mm. that was the only way it would come true if wow. i would give that wish away yeah receiving was not an easy thing for me either i'm, I'm still learning about receiving yeah still everybody learning about receiving i, I told the story earlier with shauna grace on haunted playground but i just had to do two trips to the airport and basically be in a wheelchair and get pushed around and not only be at the mercy of somebody to pick me up from the plane and take me to the next gate, but to be at the mercy of the stares and the looks and the way people look at you when you come on the plane and you're in the, And I can get up and walk on the plane, unlike some folks that were on the plane with me that couldn't. I can, but I can't do distances right now. And, man, the, the looks and the, 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 the way it feels to hope that chair is there or otherwise you're not sure you can get off the jetway into your gate and, and the vulnerability it takes to receive that much. Mm -hmm. I grew a lot yeah. this week. Yeah. And uh, I learned a lot. So um, vulnerability is so important. It's so important that we all feel that. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard for some people. It's hard for me. I was raised tough and Irish by a tough and Irish person who was tough and Irish. So, <laughs> um, you know, not, not raised to to be vulnerable and, and who hated it when she got old and wound up on the cane uh, 20 years after me. Um, <laughs> she, she, uh, she hated it. And when she was younger and she had problems with her knees and had a lot of surgeries, she would just not leave the house until she was off the crutch, off the cane. Cause she didn't want anybody to see her like that. Mm. And I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to be out with the cane. I'm going to be out with the knee braces. I got ice packs in my knees right now. I'm going to be totally honest about it. I don't care who sees it. Because other people are going through struggles and they need to know that I too am going through struggles and I'm just going to be open and vulnerable with everybody. Yeah. Now you've seen it, the ice pack in my knee. <laughs> now you know all my secrets. Although I did have my cane up here during Haunted Playground and I knocked it over with a shoe. So, all right, we're going to get Janet on the phone with us. How are you doing today, my friend? Rebecca? Oh, good. How I thought you were talking to today, Janet. <laughs> I'm good. It's not with us yet. Oh, oh, gotcha. <laughs> Well, Janet's is she here. is she ready yet? In okay. just a second, she'll be ready. Okay, okay. We're getting her on there. All right. The phone is dialing. She's getting there as quick as she can. Come on, Janet. Yep, not yet. Skype is still doing its dance. Skype well, does this little say dance. on like that vulnerability piece that I I agree it's so important for us to share, especially as you know, quote unquote, women of power. You know, and I, I believe every woman is a woman of power. I do too. Um. You know, but there's a perception there. And, you know, for me, I'm a healer, I'm a shaman. Um, and, you know, it was definitely interesting for me in this last book, uh, collaborative book that I contributed to, the Shamanism in the New Millennium book. And I wrote very um, candidly about my journey with sexual trauma. And uh, it was, I had to get very real and very vulnerable and um, I, I, I'm so happy that I did uh, because I know that other women and men that read it now, you know, can go, wow, well, she, she's happy, you know, mm -hmm. she's, she's able to have relationships, she's, she's, she's healed, like my trauma can heal too. Yep. She's not walking around like with that rabbit, and I call it rabbit, like, you know how rabbit, they're like, their heart races really mm -hmm. fast and that's. I know what it feels like when you're carrying that trauma inside your yeah. body. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, I wanted to show people that a woman of power that um, had been disempowered 
and it, it doesn't have to stay. Yep. Yeah. And that's the same reason I'm doing it. I want people to know you can get better. You can heal. Mm -hmm. You can heal naturally. Yeah. And uh, it takes a little bit longer, but it's worth not having to be cut open if you don't have to be. Mm -hmm. And that, um, that I will get stronger and that you can do it too. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I'm definitely still learning to show my vulnerabilities in other ways. There's, there's a, there's just a, like, I've got it. Like, it's okay. I'm okay. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, I'm learning to go, you know what? Yeah, I'm okay. But uh, Hey, I'm going to tell you what's bugging me mm -hmm. because you know, when we show, when we show that vulnerability, when we show like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. It's okay. I'm hurting, you know, that, that, that's, that's the power because then it actually attracts the help that we need. Mm -hmm. That's our prayer to the universe saying, absolutely. I need help. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And just saying, I need to take this time for me. Mm -hmm. That's how I got in this shape was that I, I was, I fell and I got hurt and then I, I didn't take the time to get healed and I thought I had healed and then it got cold and I got worse mm -hmm. and then it would be horrible. And the minute I felt like I could, uh, like I could come back, I would come back and start working again. I would come back and start doing things and then it would get worse and I'd mm -hmm. take one or two days off and the minute I could walk, I'd go back. I never gave myself the time to heal. Yeah. I kept covering up with, I can work, I can do it, I can get there, I can not disappoint this person, I can stand up during this thing when I should be sitting. And and I didn't. And then it got so bad that I had to take a month and do nothing. Yeah. So, you know, you have to heal. We all need to heal when something needs to be healed, whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual, it needs to heal. And you can't keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Right. Or it just gets worse. Janet, welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? Janet, did we scare Janet? All right, let's try this again. Ooh. Oh, oh, I heard the magic the sound. <laughs> I usually turn it down. Here we go. Now we're going to try her again. We're calling you, Janet. Oh, you heard it again. Two bloop, some bloop. more. Bloop, 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 bloop. It does a little dance, and it does this dance, and it goes do, do, do. <laughs> bow, bow, bow. Welcome to the show, Janet. Hello. How hey. are you? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. Say hi to Rebecca, and how may we help you, sweetheart? I'm hi. just wondering what you in regards to my marriage situation. Okay. All right. You or me, Rebecca, who's doing? Uh, you better go. Okay, this is mine. I'm not getting a thing right now. Um, I, I feel like, Janet, like you are at a place where you're not you're not communicating with each other as well as you should. Does that make sense? Yeah. The communication is, <clears throat> it's like neither one of you is really telling the other one what you want and what you need and what you feel. So there's, you're throwing something out and, and then it's being heard wrong and then your spouse is throwing something out and then you're hearing it wrong and, and it's just not quite clicking in the communication department. Is that right? Yeah. And difference would be difference would be um I haven't been given um the chance to speak. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's been all the other person messing up me. Yeah. And we'll <clears throat> find one minute after next, if that makes sense. Right. So you're fine one minute and then things get crazy. Yeah. And, you, and you're not really let in on what's going on. It's just you're not really being told. Like you're almost stuck outside of the communication circle. And whatever's going on with your spouse, you're not being involved in the situation. Pretty much. Yeah. And that's frustrating, sweetheart, because I think one of the hardest things for humans, well, nobody likes to be shut out. That's one thing. And then also just when you feel like you don't have a voice. I mean, it's... You know, when I do healings on folks and I do chakra cleanses, one of the most prevalent things that I see is there's gunk in the, in the throat chakra. And it's because somebody yeah. feels like they're not being heard and they don't have a voice. And I think that very much yeah. is a concern with what's going on with you too. And, and it's not, it's, um, 
it's an interesting thing. It's it's not it's not even for a lack of caring on your ma- it's not like it's just that there's just a there's just a communication rift that's gone on between the two of you and you're out of sync with each other. And and there's a lot of stuff going on with your mate that is going on internally. Yeah. Um, Makes a lot of sense because we haven't talked since April. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I woke up to him uh, leaving the house the last time I saw him, actually. So we haven't communicated. Yeah. Yeah, some stuff is going on inside of him for sure. And um, he's kind of on a he's on a journey, and it's and it's not right that he has not let you know what's going on, or he hasn't included you in the journey. But I think he's so stuck inside of himself right now that he almost can't. He just he just can't do anything but run, run and not deal with what's going on inside of him. And I'm so that sorry, sweetheart. Sense. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. Yesterday was a <clears throat> yesterday was a anniversary, and I did my part of trying to reach out, but nothing on his end. Yeah, sweetie. Sometimes we just have to. Give somebody space to go through their thing. And I know that's so painful to hear. And I know it doesn't help. But I almost feel like in this instance, communicating, I mean, I think to send the follow-up for the anniversary was fine. But I think trying to communicating, trying to communicate right now only chases him farther away. That he really needs yeah. the space to figure out his own stuff. Do you see when the will come to to a con- completion see you when we'll be able to communicate again i I think you will communicate again, but I think it's gonna take some time um yeah there he was always a little troubled, right there were always some things going on in him that made him troubled. Yeah. And so I think he hasn't, like we talked about earlier, he hasn't healed from his troubles. So they've just built up and built up and built up until they he's had a little bit of a setback from them. And sometimes when we're angry at ourselves for not dealing with our stuff and not healing the way that we should, we blame those around us. Or when we're unhappy inside of ourselves, we convince ourselves that what's wrong is our surroundings and everybody in our immediate surroundings. And we take off and we leave and we run. And it takes a while to figure out that what's what's broken is inside of us. But it's very hard, sense. sweetheart, very hard to be the person living outside of all of that. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out <clears throat> figure out what what and how to do whatever needs to be done from my end like you know trying to let him know that I'm there but that's very hard yeah considering I've <clears throat> unfortunately been blocked in every diagonal that you can block a person, that's me. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm trying to figure out how to help him uh, without making him mad. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. everything is 
every, everything was fine, and then following day he's gone. So. Mm. Yeah, I think all that stuff, sweetheart, it just built up and built up and built up. Like I said, until there was almost like a snap. Like I can hear the snap. Mm-hmm. And he just could not could not deal with his own stuff any longer. Rebecca, am I? Yeah, yeah. So I agree. I, I felt that same. The snap? The snap. And uh, like he had just reached his tolerance and within himself yeah. and no longer actually trusted himself to be around you mm-hmm. um, because of the level of anger that he was feeling. Not necessarily because of anything that you did. Um, so there's, you know, what I invite you to do, what I'm seeing and hearing is, uh, to, to just be with you, you know, uh, taking your time and your energy right now, um, away from him and investing that instead in you right now. Um, he, he will do whatever healing he is ready to do and when he's ready to do it. And he knows you're there. He knows how to reach out to you. So let him have his journey. And what I'm more concerned about is your journey. Because although he has healing to do, now you have healing to do too. Mm. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, It's it's been a pretty sweet couple months because he left and then... My family and ends up being on his side. So nobody from my side is paying attention to and or acknowledging mm. me. Mm. So he's got both families, and um, it's a very difficult, difficult situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. given the fact that you know not only does he have his family and his family is doing whatever they can to end everything but he also has my family and my family not even Paying attention to not not to him, but to me. Yeah, yeah, but but that's a lot of I think that misunderstanding, sweetheart, that I was talking about. I think there are misconceptions. Your family has a misconception. Um. Yeah. And they need to know, you need to communicate with them. So I think, sweetheart, in regards to what you should do, um, the first thing you should do is communicate with your family. Forget about him for now. Focus on repairing the relationships with your family. (laughs) My family is um, full on avoiding me. I know. I know, sweetheart. They won't pick up phones. But it'll get better. I got faith. It will. It will get better. Absolutely. You you need to you need to start to st- something. There's been a a miscommunication. There's been a a communication break. Something has been said that isn't right, and and folks think things about you that aren't true, and and that's the first place you have to repair. Yeah. And then worry about what's going on with him later, because you know hurt people hurt people. Mm-hmm. And when they're disappearing and they're running away, they say things and they do things that they shouldn't say or do. And other people get pulled in that don't need to be pulled into something. So start thinking about who would be the easiest person to repair something with and move in that direction first. And then Good point. S- slowly but surely start repairing those family, family relationships. And then you can move from there, sweetheart. We love you so much, and I want you to be okay, and you stay in touch with me and let me know what's happening, all right, sweetheart? Um, my heart is with you, and so is Rebecca's. Um, wow, heartbreaking. You know, that's happened to me. That happened to me 
That happened to me. That happened to me. <laughs> God. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Sheena. <laughs> it's happened to me three times in my life. Oi. Oi. Once in college, I was dating this guy, and I thought everything was great, and then one day he just com- completely stopped communicating with me. And then even dropped out of the class we were in together. And I ran into him in a parking lot about seven months later, and he gave me some really weird excuse that obviously wasn't the truth. But no, like, hey, I can't do this, or no. Hmm. You know? And then what else did it happen to? Well, I, I know the big time it happened. That was the one day I just got the, uh, oh, yeah, oh, no, I remember both times it happened. <laughs> yeah, one time, nothing ever. One time it was a voicemail saying, I love you, and then nothing ever. And then I ran into somebody um, maybe six months later and there was a very uncomfortable, oh, hi, I've been really busy. <laughs> I've been really busy avoiding you. And then it happened to me maybe five years ago where one day it was, uh, I'm, I'm, my friend says, I can't talk to you anymore. So I don't know if that, what lesson that is for me. Maybe you can explain this to me later, Rebecca. But there is not, maybe Over it was, artisan churros. Over an artisan churro. I need a lot of, I mean, a big old shot of Nutella to deal with that. I think, um, where I am in my life right now, the lesson was that I needed to learn to be less codependent. I needed to learn, but I wasn't like weird with these people. I was super chill, but I need to learn to not in my heart have expectations for a situation just because somebody promises something. I need to understand that people hurt people, hurt people and people come and go as they want. And not to spend the rest of my life asking why, 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 why. But it is, it is the most painful thing. And I think it's the, I, I mean, I'm going to be really honest, Janet, and everyone listening. I think it's the shittiest thing. I think to just disappear from someone's life and not ever say why. I think if you're going to leave someone's life, at least have the decency to say, I love you, but this isn't working. Or I don't think we should do this anymore. I think ghosting, which has become so prevalent in humanity lately, mm-hmm. I just think it sucks. Yeah. I think it's kind of a coward's way out. Yeah, uh, I mean, certainly sneaking out while someone's asleep. I think it's a little little coward. Yeah, and you know, I think the biggest thing is that, like you were saying, of understanding um, that. <laughs> how prevalent misunderstanding is really, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, that what most people see of you, their story about you, uh, in most cases is so very far Mm -hmm. from your truth, from Mm -hmm. your Mm -hmm. story about yourself or your experience or your point of view. And so that's why, you know, there was, um, a dear, dear friend in my life that he had an amazing rule. He just said, before I ever change my opinion about anyone or anything, I ask, Mm. you know, and it was just kind of a twist on don't make assumptions, but I love that. Right. But it it brought it more home because there was something he had heard about me and, you know, and he had said like, before I change my opinion of you, I wanted to ask, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, know, which I thought, well, who, yeah, who what a, what an amazing respect. Like, thank you. Right. And, well, yeah, and all of the course, people... the story that he'd heard was ridiculous right. and, uh, you know, was so far from the truth. And, you know, and yet, you know, it happens all the time that people change their opinion or develop an opinion based on an assumption or based on gossip mm-hmm. or based on their own perception, which just because you see something doesn't mean it's true right? (laughs) Believing is seeing most of the time. And so we're really just seeing what we believe uh, versus believing what we see. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important to clarify. And, you know, I mean, I've done a lot of work at clearing the filters in my mind. um, And yet I, I know, I, I, you know, I, I know better. Ask, <laughs> you know? right? Yes. Ask, yes. and not just when I'm my opinion Absolutely is about to ask. change or yeah. is being developed, but just ask all the time. I ask, like, is this even just myself? I ask, like, is this the direction we're going in? Is yeah. this right, Spirit? Is this where you want me? Um, I check in because life is changing, people are changing, and yeah, I agree. There's, it's. To me, it, I wouldn't describe it as cowardly necessarily, but there is something to it where I just go, 
Cowardly. It's unloving. To me, it's just unloving, yeah. and I don't understand. And it's a little uh, shitty. And, yeah. the, and the people who believe, they're mm-hmm. shitty, too. You know, a very good friend said to me, interesting enough, when we were first getting to know each <laughs> I other. I love how br- blunt you are. It's yeah, shitty. It's shitty. <laughs> Plain and simple. Yeah. It's shitty. You wanted me to engineer your show. Are you sure now? It's, it's, <laughs> it's shitty. Um, I won't say that on Shameless Feminine, but on Shameless hey, Sheena. Shameless Feminine is allowed to say shitty. <laughs> on You're allowed Shameless to say shitty. Sheena, we say that shitty. Um, <laughs> shameless Sheena. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like redundant, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, a very dear friend of mine said, as we were just getting to know each other once, we were talking about gossip and she said, you know what? When a person comes to me and tries to talk a bunch of stuff about somebody else, that's usually the person causing the trouble. Mm-hmm. And it's true. Mm-hmm. But people fall for it. They're gullible. They love it. Yeah. It's sad. Still trying to figure that one out. My heart is with you, darling. Yeah. Janet, my heart is with you. Okay, mm-hmm. so we're going to get Darlene on with us now. Darlene. And, uh, there are so many people in the chat room right now, like a hundred comments. People are hopping in there. Awesome. Boop, there's a Skype noise. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I mean to turn it down. <laughs> That's what it sounds like, doesn't it? <laughs> I love that you turn it down on Skype so that we don't have to hear the Skype do it, but and then, then I you sing do it. it. <laughs> yes. It's much Something better than like doing it. Shameless Sheena. <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad shameless Sheena. <laughs> hey, shamelessly shameless. Come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, Darlene, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Hi, ladies. I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. It's so good to hear your voice. Say hi to Rebecca and how may we help you? Hi, love. Hi. Hi. Okay. (laughs) Well, um, my husband passed away a couple years ago. I'm so sorry. And we were together. Thank you. We were together for 26 years. Mm. And I had hurt my knee at work. And it's almost been two years on that and I had surgery I've almost recovered from that good and so and then my work closed so I've been I'm out of work and now I'm single so I'm like restarting all over again from scratch and recently I've met a couple different men and I don't know if I should even be dating right now or if if I should just pick one of them that I should date. I don't know, I'm a little confused right now because I am starting over and I don't know if I should just be working on myself instead of even thinking about dating. I'm hearing a lot of shoulds in there. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of doubts, baby girl. I think you always can be thinking about dating. I don't think there's ever a bad time to date the right person. I think right. that you've got, you've come so far, you've got so much going on and you've done so much with your life and you're doing so great and you've, you've become the victor of so many circumstances. I don't think that this is the time for you to become obsessed with the outcome of no. if I don't find somebody, am I this, 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 and this, but I think right. it's perfectly okay for you to, to think about dating. Sure. Yeah. Cause the one the one guy I started dating, he's almost seems like he's obsessed. <laughs> and the okay. other one that I met out in punk rock bowling in Vegas, okay. he, him and I have a lot in common. And but he's very standoffish. But we have a good we went out one time. We had a good time together. So I don't know if I should even go with. The one guy who seems a little obsessed. <laughs> well, I mean, and I'm very nervous talking on the radio right now. So why? Have to don't oh, be nervous. Yeah, don't we be love nervous. you. <laughs> don't be, we're just like talking oh, to two thanks. friends, sweetie. Yeah. We're just a couple of weirdos that sit around at night and eat artists and churros. So there's <laughs> I, know, I love listening to you guys. There's, so cool. there's nothing embarrassed to be out in front of us. Talking. I never um, thought I'd be the other one on the other side here. <laughs> no, you're doing beautifully, sweetheart. Um, I, 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 oh, think that, I think that it depends on what you mean by obsessed for the punk rock bowling well, guy. Cause I, I no, think, that was the other guy. Oh, oh that's, that's not punk rock no, bowling? Yeah, yeah, the other guy. The punk rock bowling off. guy, he's, he's the standoffish one. He, oh. he goes very slow because he's a workaholic. Yeah, punk rock. The other one. Yeah, I don't like. I like the other oh, guy. Go ahead. No, I like uh, punk rock bowling. is is a little bit about himself. Uh huh. Oh, okay. And what's going on with him? Um. No. Yeah. What What happened with the other guys? The other guy, like rock and bowl guy? Are they both bowling people? <laughs> 
No. The other one, actually, my daughter, since my husband passed away, she's been doing tattoo therapy. Okay. At, I met him at the tattoo shop my daughter was going to a lot. Nice. Okay. And he's just coming out of a bad relationship, and he's just, he just thinks I'm the greatest thing, and I don't know. It kind of scared me. I, okay, so this is what I want to talk about. This, I want to talk about <laughs> okay. not not punk rock bowling guy, okay. the guy that we are calling obsessed. And I'm like, can you hear my finger quotes whooshing through the air? It doesn't yes. sound like he's obsessed. It sounds like he's a guy that truly digs you. And I don't know okay. that you know how to receive that right now. I mean, you're having a hard time opening up and receiving, and partially it's because I think you feel very guilty moving on after your husband yes and i think you you have like survivor's guilt and you feel like you're betraying your husband so because this guy is so into you you automatically think well there must be something wrong with this guy because obviously (laughs) i'm betraying my husband so what's wrong with this stalking weirdo that wants me to cheat you know and so i I just think that you have it like your head just a little bit little bit screwed on off kilter when you think about it because you're still mourning and you're still missing your husband. And I think when you said the thing about it is it okay to date, I think a lot of that too is you're asking yourself, am I allowed to, is it time? Would he be okay with that? You know, and then also you've gone yeah. through some stuff, right? Some medical stuff, some family stuff, some oh, spousal yeah. stuff. And, and on top of all of that, um, here's this guy that's like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Give me more. Give me more. And you're like, oh, this uh-huh. guy must be a stalker, and I'm going to wind up in someone's <laughs> freezer. But <laughs> but he doesn't seem like that at all. He seems, okay. he just seems excited about you. And I think that's a wonderful thing. And I, th- I think you should tell Punk Rock Bowling to, to take uh-huh. a leap because I don't think you should chase after him and his whole, well, I don't have a lot of time okay. because I'm very into me right now. I think you should go with the guy that likes you and, and have some fun and ha- build some good memories. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It makes complete sense because I can see that about the punk rock one guy. And because he is, he's a workaholic and he is, he's in, I can tell he's into himself. And and the other one, yeah. He is he's very sweet. I just, like you said, I wasn't sure how to perceive it. And take everything all in. Yeah. Yeah, and just tell him. <clears throat> Look, just tell him. I lost my husband. I had some health stuff. I got stuff going on. I need you to go a little slow. That doesn't mean I'm not being like Mrs. Punk Rock Bowling Chick and being like, oh, I don't have time because I'm so busy with my life. I'm just telling I'm not telling you no. I'm just telling you I get very easily overwhelmed right now. You're fresh out of a relationship. So let's just enjoy having a beginning. It's okay to have a beginning because I just think, In, you know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and when I do tell him that, sometimes he gets, I've heard, he gets pouty in his voice. No. And like he gets upset. It's like, I go, you sound upset. He's like, well, I am a little disappointed. Aww. Like, well, I. <laughs> uh, well, but he, but you have to tell him it's not lack of feeling. It's just that I want to yeah. enjoy having a beginning because we'll never get another beginning. Because I think he thinks that's a rejection. I mean, his ex was weird. Okay. Right? Yeah. Ooh, yes. she, she and punk yes. rock bowling guy should go bowling for real. <laughs> Like yeah, she was he's... completely about herself and, you know, one hates to say narcissist, but you know what? If the sli- yeah. if the scaly skin fits, narcissist. Yeah, I think she was like that. So he's very kind of angry person. Yes. And very controlling. So he's kind of in a little place of a little bit of desperation within himself because mm-hmm. he's scared like no one will ever like him back. Like he's. He's, you know, he's not, he's worried that he's not good enough because these are all things she reinforced in him and explain to him. And if he doesn't get it, tell him to call aunt Sheena Explain to him okay. that this is ex- shameless Sheena at punk rock bowling. <laughs> it, explain to him that this is exactly why you guys should have a beginning. You should have a beginning because, um, because he's growing out of the horrible patterns, the false patterns that she put on him. And you're dealing with this pattern of grief. 
And that's why yeah. you guys will grow closer if you take it a little slow, you know? Right. Because he's a little okay. what we call in the community narc abused. He's a little bell rung from her narcissistic malarkey. And I was getting that. I could tell he felt a little awkward sometimes, mm-hmm. and I knew it was due to that bad relationship. Yeah, and her telling him, like, you're nothing, and I don't ever know why I married you because, you you know, Brooke got together with you because you're just, why did I waste my time on you? And, you know, all those things that narcissists say, and they're actually looking in a yeah. mirror, but they pretend they're uh-huh. looking at you when they say it. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And he's such a sweet guy, and, and I just think he's lovely. So um, I'm all about tattoo boy, not punk rock bowling man. All right. Rebecca? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you pretty much said it all. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I just think it's important that you stay in a place that's light and fun and um, you're just getting used to the idea that of dating and like you came out the gate with should I, should I this, should I that, should I, should I, should I. And Mm -hmm. so I just say whatever rule book it is that you have there, burn it, (laughs) burn the rule book. Okay. Just burn Burn the rule book. Okay. And have fun with your life. You know, there's, you know, there's a misconception. I mean, yeah, grief, grief is grief. Right. And it lasts as long as it does. And you probably still have moments of grief, right. It still probably washes into your day, washes over you like a, you know, a tidal wave at times. And, um, and yet another way that we grieve is actually in celebration, you know, for yes. me, one of the greatest ways that I, I grieve, like my, my beloved grandfather, just my still to this day, my favorite guy ever. And well, my dad, my dad is really maybe edging up on that one. But, um, anyway, <laughs> my grandfather, when he passed, I was just <laughs> devastated. And yet one of the best ways that I grieved and, and really that I could feel his energy inviting me to was to remember him. It was celebration with joy to laugh. You know, he used to always, he was yeah. a funny guy and he would always tell these jokes. So it was just to let his presence be with me and to laugh because I could hear that joke again. Or like, yeah, man, yeah. if Bangy were here, he'd bake it, break out the gut bucket and the kazoo, you know? And it's like, well, if uh-huh. Bangy were here, well, let's do it. You know what I mean? Bangy would be that's playing right. the kazoo at his, <laughs> that's what we called him, Bangy. He'd be playing the kazoo at his own funeral. Like, so why aren't we, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, and you laugh and you cry and that's all part of it. So there are no rules when it comes to grieving. There are no rules or timelines, like when it's appropriate, like throw that word out, what's appropriate. You know, uh-huh. you do what feels good to you, what makes your heart sing, you know? Okay. And if what is making your heart sing is like, hey, I just, I need a day to myself. I want to just like go for a hike and remember my husband today. And that's what makes your heart sing because you want to be with him today, then do it. If it's to okay. be with Tattoo Man, like, great, then go and enjoy yourself mm-hmm. thoroughly. And, you know, uh, throw that rule book out though. Cause I heard like, I don't know how many shoulds, at least five, maybe seven shoulds came yeah. out of your we mouth. Like gunners instead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a gunner. I wanna, I wanna, mm-hmm. I, I wanna, wanna and, and I gonna. gonna. <laughs> <laughs> want the here. shameless I wanna, feminine. I wanna, and I gonna. I wanna, and I'm a gunner. <laughs> you take care of yourself, sweetheart. We love you. And we're thinking about you and, um, uh, let us know how it goes with the tattoo man and uh, tell, uh, Punk rock bowling. <laughs> punk rock bowling. I, I, I kind of want to go, actually. <laughs> I used to love rock and bowl. That was my favorite. Rock and bowl? They turn all the lights out and you bowl in the dark and they oh. play rock music. Oh. You never rock and bowled in the 80s? Oh. I wasn't. You I was probably too young for was, rock and bowl. Uh, yeah, I was, I, I was a wee one in the 80s. Yeah. A wee one. Yeah, maybe that stopped. I, then I hurt my neck and I didn't do it for a while. So maybe that, yeah. Now they have something called psychedelic bowl or something my friends disco niece. bowling no it's not disco bowling disco bowl would be funny though because it's like disco ball yeah no that would be good Dude, disco would be a great thing to do bowling be fun too. right yeah but out here do they, they have like the what is it candle pin bowling where it's like the little balls and you get three some places but not really that's See, more that's what I miss, right yeah they called it duck pin when i can't I in do Baltimore. the big balls i can't <laughs> sorry rebecca can't handle big balls what I can i say shameless <laughs> sheena <laughs> <laughs> shameless Sheena. <laughs> shameless Sheena likes <laughs> likes a big ball. Uh, just one? 
My ball's 11 pounds. As many big balls mm. as you want. Yeah. I, I like the big balls. I like when they can fit in my hand nicely. What can I say? Yeah, I, it's weird though. You can't get because you get three three throw three throws to get the pins down. I don't know. It's weird. I love it. Three chances. Everything good happens in threes. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that. Just one. That's like it, and little, it's over. I'm sure you could find the little pins somewhere. No, not one. You get two. Oh, you get two. Have you ever bowled with the bowled with the big balls before? Not really. I mean, I have, but I never liked it. I love and they balls. didn't. It wasn't a big thing on the east. Yeah, and so when I, I lived were, in San Diego for a while and no, I was just like, it hurts my fingers. They're too heavy. It's, oh, I can't do it. I'm a, fr- I'm a delicate <laughs> you're, flower. You're a shaman and you can't hold a bowling ball? <laughs> no, I can hold the little ones. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I just need proper instruction on how to handle a ball. I'll give you a big a, ball. I'll give you some instructions, sweetheart. <laughs> I'll show you how to hold my big ball. <laughs> 11 pounds. 11 pounds. Right. Yeah. I was upset I didn't get a 12 pounder, but now I'm glad I didn't because my, because it, the heavier the ball, the easier it is to knock the pins down. Yeah. It even has my name carved in it. My dad worked for Brunswick. Really? Little. Wow, he didn't work hardcore. in the bowling alley division, but yeah, I got, I had shoes and a ball. I got a bowling bag. I love the shoes. Yeah. I really love the shoes. I don't like my shoes. I got, I, I picked them out because they didn't look like bowling shoes. They looked like top siders. But now I don't like them because they don't feel the way the bowling shoes have those wood soles, the leather soles, yeah, and, and a little wood heel, and they just feel slippery. better on the lane. So yeah. now I want to get some weird tricolor clown shoes because tricolor just clown shoes. Because that's what they all look like. They have the three colors. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you get them, and they just put the spray in them. Here you go. How many feet have been in these? Ew. I love bowling. Bowling <laughs> is my, bowling's my jam. Well, I'll go bowling with you. Okay, as soon as I can you walk, can, you can teach me. We'll bowl. Yes, I'll teach you to bowl. It's so easy. You'll love it. Yeah, you can drink and scream at the, pretend the pins are Bruins, and you can scream. Oh. Go down. What's wrong with you? Get out of here. <laughs> I never scream at my Bruins. I scream I scream at whoever's hurting my Tuca. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Rebecca, what a great show. Uh, where can people find you online, my friend? Well, you can find me on social media pretty much everywhere, at Shaman Sister. And my website is RebeccaHaywood.com. And please check out my upcoming journey to Teotihuacan, Mexico, uh, The Shameless Heart, it's called. And that's the first week in August. And we're also going to Tolentango, some fabulous waterfalls and caves and hot springs. It's going to be lovely. And stay tuned for The Shameless Feminine here on LA Talk Radio. Yeah, in two weeks. In two weeks. Two weeks, baby. We're getting shamelessly feminine. I will be in the chat room being shameless Sheena with all of you. Yeah. Well, Rebecca says um, very important things about spirituality and femininity and masculinity. Yeah. It's going to be so fun every week. And I'm even going to broadcast from Mexico. Yes. (laughs) And I will be here while she's in Mexico. Yeah. Doing my thing. Um, If you want to get a reading on a future Lightworkers Unite, just send me a text. 818-437-0886. We do it on Haunted Playground and on the Sheena Metal Experience here on what I like to call Psychic Tuesdays. Also, uh, we're at WeLightWorkersUnite.com. I just put a whole bunch of our past episodes up there. You can go check out those broadcasts and watch other people, listen to other people getting readings and and see some good advice and some fun with all of my lightworkers. Um, my spiritual page is at IamRaisingYourVibration.com and SheenaMetalSpiritual.com. I'm available for private sessions and healings and uh, parties and classes and anything that you need. Um, I'm also a pastor at the Founders MCC Church. Saturday Night Spiritual are my services there, saturdaynightspiritual.com. I have two great psychic paranormal web series, uh, Living with the Dead at wearelivingwiththedead.com and Altered at wearealtered.com. Patty Negri is my co-host for the first. General Hospital's Carolyn Hennessy is my co-host for the second, two of my dearest friends. And um, also I'm the uh, founder of a movement of peace, love, kindness, and unity, RaisingTheVibration.org and I am RaisingTheVibration.com. Uh, July 20th, I'm back at the Founders MCC Church doing Saturday Night Spiritual. And I'm everywhere on Facebook at Sheena Metal. And of course, four shows I do here, soon to be five, um, on LA Talk Radio. Uh, this has been my home for over 10 years. And this is my baby. It's my daily show. It's called the Sheena Metal Experience. We're at SheenaMetalExperience.com and LATalkRadio.com. And you know what happens here, my friends. Every Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific time, we rip the veil off the human sideshow and expose those big old homo sapiens at their most bizarre, sometimes 
and at their most beautiful every single day, I promise. And you know it's my show, and that's true, my friends. It is my show. But what it really is, always and forever, it's your experience. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. And I'll see you all tomorrow right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to L.A. Talk Radio.